anyone you want to come to my YouTube channel. Just Google, I guess, Stu J. Raj or, or Mindcraft. Or you can get them to register on the Zoom link. Um, is it still lagging? People are coming in. I can hear you You can hear me okay? Okay, just yeah, keep letting them in. And we're about to go live on YouTube. Now, could I just ask that everybody keep your mics off? Normally in a Minecraft session, we will actually turn mics on during discussions. Um, but because so many people are coming in today, just keep your mics off. And if we have people jump in and, and talk, discuss, then you, you can do the Zoom thing. I'm sure since the pandemic, everybody's accustomed to using Zoom uh, and switching. Uh, we're just trying to work out why. Hey, Casper, good to see you here. Fires just entered the room. Everybody's coming in. Rob, Rob has prepared a treat for all of you. I, uh, <laughs> I just listened to your clip, Rob. We're going to be listening to it today. Very, very cool. Uh, I love that. Um, Gang Ma. Top Ma. Come Ma. <laughs> okay, come on. Why is YouTube doing this? Google APIs. I've closed down a bunch of tabs already. Sorry, guys, we're just uh, getting this streaming service, but this is good. Um, pardon my crunching my, of fishermen's friends, too. I'm just waiting for this to go, and then I'll start recording as we go up. We've got. Okay. Hi, Lena. Lena, everybody's coming in. Okay, so we're just uh, we're just getting this final um, YouTube link set up. For some reason, it's taking forever. Many of you may have seen the uh, YouTube link. Oh, I, I see life in YouTube. Come on, you can do it. We are going to be starting shortly. Minecraft session uh, eleven. For those who don't know what Minecraft is. You can go to minecraft.me, um, and if you actually want to see a lesson breakdown, you can click on the um, "Take Me to the Course." Okay, sorry, I'm just um, trying to. This YouTube link is painful. This morning, when we did a test run, also as we're going through. Uh, you may want to open the link minecraft.me slash consonant compass. Now, you'll be hearing a lot about the voice and things that we've been doing during Minecraft. And a lot of that is based on this human map of uh, the mouth, which is built into the Thai writing system, Burmese, Tibetan, all Indic scripts. Um, it's a map of the human mouth. So we might be touching on that. I might be referring to... Uh, to that during the session today. Come on, YouTube. This is like crazy. Internet connection unstable. Okay. Um, Pete, are you in on YouTube? I don't want to be keeping, we'll, we'll probably look another couple of minutes. Um, I'm, not seeing the, I'm not seeing the screen right now. The stream's not up on YouTube yet. I just want to make sure that we go live. I'm going to hit record and we'll be good to go. We're live on YouTube. Okay. So I'm going to start recording here. That's what we want to hear. Okay. And now I'm going to pull this. So Pete, you can, um, I have this up behind me. All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday morning. Uh, if you are in other parts of the world, it's still probably Saturday. Uh, it's just after 10 a.m. here. And today is a momentous day. Today is session 11 of my Minecraft 
Frame Builder series, the, the Evergreen. So what Minecraft uh, is, is a program, many people have tried learning languages and failed. Uh, some people have been learning languages for a long time and they still, they either plateau or they find themselves not being understood by locals or not getting anywhere with their speaking. And so I looked at how I learned languages and Minecraft started uh, a few years back when a friend asked me, could I work with her son? She saw that he had potential. I'd never worked with kids like that before, but she said, just everything you do, see if you can teach him. And he was an 11 year old kid at the time. And so we started on piano and he could do it. They actually went out and bought him a, pia a grand piano to show that he was committed. And he was getting these jazz licks and training his ears. Um, everyone just uh, turn your mics off if possible. Um, and so, okay, sorry, I'm just, um, trying to whoa, YouTube. I, I think I need to mute my YouTube. This morning when we did a test run, whoa. also as we're going through, Sorry, guys. No, I can't close it. I can't close it. All right. So anyway, this kid, to cut a long story short, learned um, coding, languages, music, jazz theory. Um, and we just kept pushing it and pushing it. And he was getting it. Um, and so I realized, heck, so, well, it's not just me, other people can do it. And so Minecraft was building on that. How do you take the skills from within you, use the brain, um, and we use Andrew Huberman's podcast, uh, which is fantastic. If you haven't um, subscribed to Dr. Andrew Huberman, uh, I really recommend it. And learning about how the brain learns, uh, brain states, manipulating brain states. And this is how I learn languages as well. And then we take tech and looking at, rather than depending on old dusty textbooks, how do we be, make our own textbooks? How do we get real information and use powers of data analysis and putting our own tools together? And then also then about language. Language. How do we realize how language is produced in us and learn about phonology and everything? Because if you watched a clip that I put out a few days back on Thai talk with Paddy, and I did an analysis on his Thai. And the reason I was um, spurred on to, to do that is because Paddy asked a native speaker or several native speakers on the street, could you help correct my tie? Could you critique my tie? And if you listened to the critique that he received from native speakers of the language, it, it wasn't there. It wasn't, they, they didn't give him anything that was substantial enough to really improve his tie. They gave him what they thought may have been the issue or basically these stock standard answers, but it wasn't anything that was really constructive when it came to actually improving his tie which is what he was looking at. So what Minecraft does is basically um, takes you through all of these things and you become your own language tutor. You can self-correct. You can hear when you pronounce think the extract language from native speakers. Uh, and then native speakers play a role, but they play a role in then you using them as a tool to learn. So anyway, before we go any further, I've got a little exercise that I'd like to do with you. Could you, I'm going to put a link here. Let me share my screen. Um, let me come to screen share. The other day I, and I bought a book for my one and a half year old daughter. It was a lonely planet. Let me know when you can see the screen, Pete. So if you could go to lonelyplanet.com slash kids slash slash first dash words. You can see it on the screen here. Open that up. Let's open it up to UK English first. Because there's some fascinating things here. And this, it basically brought home 
what Minecraft was all about. So I'm going to click on English. I want you all to do this. I'm going to be playing it, but you might get a, um, a clearer stream from your own computer. And so what happens? They've got um, English, UK, US, French, Spanish, Italian, Mandarin, Japanese. Great. They've got these buttons. They've just done it in CSS. And actually, if you want the word list, you can go to my um, repository, my Git repository, and I've actually got them there in resources. So I'll show you where they are if you want to follow along. Um, you can see all the words here. Let me just quit out of that. So Minecraft resources slash resources, Lonely Planet first words. Um, you'll see it in there. Now, if you've never used a terminal in your life before, you'll also learn that. So if I list um, and then I am going to use Visidata to open Lonely Planet first words, and you'll see them all in there. It's not, it's not showing on their screen. It's not showing on their screen? It's just like on the Zoom. Is it showing on Zoom? No. Let me stop share and share again. Sorry, guys. Murphy's Law, when the internet can go bad, it will go bad at the worst time. Let me share my screen again. Pete, let me know if you can see it. Can you see my screen yet? It's not coming through. Um, anyone else? Can you see the screen share? Pete? Not yet. It says I'm screen sharing. Um, can everyone see it? Yeah, if, if Rob, can you see it? Rob is our technical genius in house. Um, why can't people see it? It says has started screen sharing. Okay, like I can see that. Project. But you see no content. Yeah. That's okay, correct. come on. Let me try once more another share. If not, I tell you what, I'm just going to pull it. You can see behind me. Maybe that's enough. So yeah. can, can you see the screen behind me now? That I'm clicking through. Uh, let me get my terminal up. If screen shares are not going to work, I'm just going to do it this okay. way. Uh, yeah, not working. You can see it on the camera yeah, there, right? Yeah, I, I can see the stuff. Here. Okay, so have a look at this. Basically, first of all, this is cool. From that Lonely Planet website, using the skills that you learn in Minecraft, um, within about one minute, I was able to scrape all of this vocabulary off. You get Chinese, Chinese pinyin. Um, sorry? Somebody's voice is breaking up. Um, Italian phonetics, Spanish, but basically this was all scraped, put into a TSV file, and we can use this as learning resource. So you'll learn how to do this in Minecraft well. This is part of the tech side of it. Um, but what I want to show you is have a look at this. If you can all go to the word cat in English, UK English, and click on the word cat. Cat. Could you hear that? Cat. Could you hear the word cat? Okay. So I'm clicking on this cat. I want you to sit and listen to it. Now, for my Minecraft guys, as you're listening to it, I want you to analyze what is happening in the voice, because this is crucial to when you're learning language. As a native English speaker, supposing you're learning a language like Thai or Chinese, listen to some of the things that are happening on the voice. Listen to the glottis, 
listen to aspiration. So the glottis, if I say what ah, what ah, that's a glottal stop. And aspiration, t versus t, t, okay, t, t, that's aspirated, non-aspirated. Now listen to the way that this kid says the word for cat. Now listen to dog. 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 Okay, so that's cat and dog. And now I'm going to, well, let, let me just put it to you. Rob, could you turn your mic on maybe? Yeah. And I'll hand it over to you because I think you've been somebody working on this. What could you notice about that cat? Um, for a start, it's high tone or sort of high folding tone, cat. Um, so they're ex she's expressing um, excitement about the cat, cat. Um, I see, I guess, but, Rob, oh, you mentioned that you've got a bad inter internet connection. I can't even yeah. Oh, mm. You can hear Rob? Why can't I hear Rob? I can't hear no. Rob. Rob, are you on? Come on. Let me just Ooh, check. Could you, could you hear Rob? Yeah. Okay, I can hear it now. It's breaking up a bit. Okay. So, yeah, I was saying the, um, the tone is okay. excitement cat which is what um falling tone for thai but also she says the t very um she, she pronounces the tap the t at the end very strongly so she says cat oh rob sorry i i can't hear i guess other people might be able to hear it yeah. you can hear okay I'm using my own can I listen in your earphone? Sure, sure. Sorry, go ahead again. So the, f the first thing I notice is the tone and she says cat, which is kind of emphasizing cat. Um, right. And at the, the end, she says the T, she enunciates the T very well, as my teacher would have said. So she says cat without the glottal stop, no glottal stop there. Right. Well, yeah, so we'll have a look at this. It's funny you talk about glottal spot, glottal stop. Um, yeah, this lag is really bad. What I've done is I've actually recorded it um, using my spectrograph here. So have a listen to this. Cat, cat. So when people are learning languages, they just want to jump in and speak. And the ears, that's, that's the lag from Rob. Yeah, it's really lagged. Okay, so what happens, you get this cat. Whoa, that's bad. Pete, maybe can you just hit uh, mute on the TV for a minute? Sure. And then I'll unmute it. Okay. So I'll just pull this up again. So this is cat. You can see here that the t, there's a glottal stop that happens. Um, let me pull this one in. I'll make it a little bigger. Actually, I, I need the TV. Hit unmute. Cat. This glottal stop stops it here and then it comes out. That's going to reap havoc when they learn Thai or when you learn Chinese or Vietnamese. Because, and that's what was happening with you, Rob. Um, you were doing this glottal stop with your British accent. 
and you weren't hitting the full words. Paddy was doing it in his Thai as well. So instead of the word chat in Thai, we'll say the word chat. The glottis closes as soon as the tongue hits. But if you cut that glottis off first, chat, chat, you sound no, you sound put no, that it's not native Thai. And you can even see here on the spectrogram behind me, hopefully you can see it, that um, cat, you see there, there's a huge stop here and then it comes up at the end. Cat, have a listen again. Okay, now listen to this one. Rabbit, rabbit. If you click on rabbit, you'll hear that. Rabbit. And so this again, it, it shows us a lot. One, when we learn from native speakers, when they tell us the ideal of what the language is, I don't know anybody who says, I saw a rabbit. In normal speech, you're not going to do the clear T like that. You're going to say, I saw a rabbit, or I saw a rabbit. Da, 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 da. And so, so people will learn, and then they will start over-pronouncing or mispronouncing. And just saying words in isolation, like in this lonely planet, great, you get some vocab, but they're not in context. We need to hear language in context as well. Um, but it's also good, though, that we can tune our ears into native speakers. Um, one other thing, I want you to listen to Japanese. Now, Japanese is a language that has what we call pitch accent. So if I slide over here to, to Japanese. Um, Come on, internet, don't do this to me. Okay, so I'm going to click on Japanese. And if I, I'm going to click on the same word, uh, Japanese, you can do it. I'm going to click on the word for cat and dog. So just click on cat then dog, if you can't hear it from me. Ready? I'm going to click cat. Neko. I want you to see if you can pronounce that word just as they've said it. Neko. 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 That's a great version. And now dog. Ine. Now, what happened? And then uh, one last one. This is one word that many people might know for Japanese. Konnichiwa. Okay. So let me have. Let me show you here what's going on. Because what happens, many people will say, konnichiwa, konnichiwa, when they're learning. Yeah, hello. And they just learn it like that. They're just looking and then, can you write it down for me in Roman script? And they'll look at it and they'll say, konnichiwa. Because their ears are filtered by what their eyes see. Now let me show you um, in the audio print what's happening. Rabbit. Oh, that's rabbit. We don't want rabbit here. I think this is it. Oh, no, that's Chinese. Chinese, we had some, but we'll just stick with Japanese. Neko. 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 Um, Neko. Why isn't my voice print coming up? Probably using too much. Neko. Neko. Now listen to this one. Inu. Inu. Voice print, come on, baby. Neko. Neko. Okay, you can't see the voice print. Neko. Neko. Uh uh. Uh uh. And there's also a glottal stop. Neko. Neko. Inu. Inu. Now, if you're not taught that Japanese has, well, it's not tonal, they call it a pitch accent because you've got high and low. Nobody learns this. And it marks their speech. Now, I know Matt versus Japan. Uh, and there's been all of these discussions, uh, Dorgan in Japan, Japanese, should Japanese learners learn about pitch accent? It's fundamental to speaking Japanese. 
every single native speaker of Japanese speaks with pitch accent from the easiest words as cat and dog or konnichiwa. Now, understanding pitch accent, oh, there you go, you can see the spectrogram now. Neko, neko, neko. And you can hear neko, neko, neko. Inu, inu, inu. Now, listen to this one. Okay, can you copy that? Say that with, with the, the um, sentence. Okay. Can you say that again? Then? Konnichiwa. What do you notice when you're saying that? You're not a Japanese speaker, by the way, are you? No. Okay, so what do you notice as you're saying that? Konnichiwa. The con has an accent. Kon ni chiwa and then the rest is flat. Is it flat? Listen again. Wow, maybe. Listen, listen again. Listen again. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, the chiwa. Ah 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 Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Yeah. Konnichiwa. Not only that, it's it well, it's actually not just slightly, it's huge. Konnichiwa, if it was Chinese, that would be different tones. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Right? And it's not konnichiwa, konnichiwa, which many learners of Japanese would do. So tuning your ears in and being able to do it like this is huge. You mightn't think that it's that important, but it's critically important when speaking and building fluency. And people lose heart when they're speaking, and even if they've learned for a long time and they don't, people, native speakers, don't understand them, or at the very least, they're gonna say, oh yeah, but you sound really foreign. Um, yeah. your, your ability to copy tones is, or copy uh, the way people say things is critical. Now have a listen to this, ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Now I tell you, as people learn Chinese, they'll learn ni and hao. Ni hao. And they'll, no matter how many times they hear it, their understanding will filter that out. But listen to what she's saying. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. So that third tone is dropping. Now then they might learn that the second and third tones actually the two three tones together ni hao becomes ni hao but it's not listen to how she's saying it ni hao. so we need to tune our ears i guess this is the moral of all of this um these exercises i just wish that the internet was better that i could get samples um what so what are we celebrating today we have a bunch of people who have gone through 11 weeks of learning some people have come in afterwards and they're still going through and they've been doing. But I really want to just hear from people that have been going through Minecraft and celebrate what you've been able to do. Rob has been so gracious as to share something with us. So what I'm going to do is play a clip, of uh, uh, audio of what Rob prepared already. So he'll be first cab off the rank. Just have a listen to this. Um, I had a chuckle, but it's so true. And you can follow the spectrograph of Rob's English too, as we do it. Or oh, yeah, I just lost the spectrograph. Hello, everyone. Let me check. Can you hear that? Okay, I'll play it again. Hello, everyone. Let me take you down to the south coast of England, where life is slow and sentences take all day to finish. Would you like some salt and vinegar on your fish and chips? Listen to the rounded vowels and the glottal stops that we use. And the glottal stops that we use. Glottal stops. Yeah, I'd love some salt and vinegar on my fish and chips. Like, did I tell you I'm going to Thailand? Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I've got a lingo too. I think I'll be all right. I've got some cow. To, to, those diphthongs instead of two. Okay. No, um, and, the, uh, oh. Yeah, I 
you all right? All right, six months later, I'm in a cafe. I think it's all of my favourite breakfast. Plain rice porridge, two eggs and some bits on top. Lovely. Oh no, I bought the wrong thing. Oh no, this must be some kind of joke. Oh no, disaster. And I thought I was going to have a cup of tea as well. Oh, a bee. Oh, check out the food. Check you at Thai Lai. Oh, Thai Lai Man. Oh, okay. Who's in this country and told me? Hey, Stuart, what's my problem? Right, mate, well, you've got to sort out that stuff or stop for a start. You've got to get your more one eye, your more one eye, stop it out in the door that. Yeah, with all that, too much like your god out. You've got to sort that out. Oh, okay, yeah. So I went away for a bit, did a few exercises, got fun, got loud, pop and cup, noon, con, fan, tea, ha! Ooh! Noon, con, fan, tea, ha! Oh, that pops a bit off. Good catch. Woo. <laughs> People saying that if they can really hear the recorded speech somehow. We couldn't. They couldn't hear the audio. It sounds a bit far. because uh, I've got it playing system audio. Let me. So people couldn't hear it. Yeah, um, it was. It wasn't that. I'm saying that it sounds a bit far away. Uh, let me see. I thought it. I have it sharing audio. Let me. Okay. Let me. Let me see if I can share the screen. Whether it will play it. I thought the system audio was playing in there. Share sound. So they want they wanted to. So okay, I'll repeat it. Can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Okay, I'm going to play that again. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, the audio. Let me know if it works, Pete. Let me take you down. Hello, everyone. Can you hear that? Okay, sorry, guys. Take two. Rob. Hello, everyone. Let me take you down to the south coast of England, where life is slow and sentences take all day to finish. Would you like some salt and vinegar on your fish and chips? Listen to the rounded vowels and the drop or stops that we use. Yeah, I'd love some salt and vinegar on my fish and chips. Hey, did I tell you I'm going to Thailand? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've heard a bit of lingo too. I think I'll be all right. I've got some cow. Here we go. Noon, on, and, tea, ah, hot. Yeah, I think you're all right. It's all right. Six months later, I'm in a cafe. I think it's all these my favorite breakfasts. Plain rice porridge, two eggs, and some bits on top. Lovely. Oh no. You brought the wrong thing. Oh no, this must be some kind of joke. Oh no, disaster. And I thought I was the nice cup of tea as well. Oh, a bee. Oh, check out the food. Check your side eye. Oh, that's a high game, man. Oh, okay. Who's in this kind of company? Hey, Stuart. What's my problem? It's, it's, it's still very distant. Right, mate. Well, you've got to sort out that stop or stops for a start. You've got to get your more way line, your more way line, sort it out in your door that. Yeah, your door that. Too much like your door now. You've got to sort that out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I went away for a bit. Did a few exercises. Got done. Got now. Pop and cut. 
Okay. Um, Rob, that was that was awesome. Uh, people are saying that they're having troubles hearing the audio. Just had to be on the last day. I wonder if there's a um, an effect with so many people in Zoom having an effect. I wouldn't think so because uh, it's coming through one server point. But anyway, Rob has this British accent where he has these rounded vowels. And I know, no, no, oh, oh. You see these glides and diphthongs. And then you've got these glottal stops going for some fish and chips, chips, fish and chips, salt and vinegar, salt and... And there's glottal stops everywhere. And so what was happening with Rob's um, Thai, because Thai was the language Rob's been focusing on, his uh, mother tongue's uh, sound system was interfering on everything. And he wasn't he hearing that it was interfering, just getting frustrated. So the point I think that Rob mentioned when he went and ordered food anytime, that would just speak to his wife rather than actually speak to him, uh, which is super frustrating. And so we looked at it and Rob started addressing some of these things, hearing what's going on in his glottis and his vowels and everything to the point now that Rob goes in and everyone speaks to him and he's able to order. And you could hear that, um, that sound paradigm, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, 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 uh. Rising, 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 falling. That happens in English. We'll do rising in a list of things and falling at the end. Uh, he was doing that on counting. Um, so ning song sam si ha ho. Um, but it should be ning song sam si ha ho ho. And I think Rob, you mentioned during the week on Discord, how do you remove emotion from tones? And you don't really, as a tonal language speaker, you don't think of it, but yeah, there's emotion attached to these tones in English. And so Rob's been actually actively doing this. And I can say you've got night and day uh, improvement on your tie. Uh, it's been fantastic. Now, the good thing is that it's not finishing today, even though it's session 11. Um, Minecraft Evergreen, it's, it's just gonna go on. Every week we're going to be meeting like this in Minecraft and having a live session. I think I'll look at the Discord server too to see how the streaming goes. Maybe it's gonna be better than um, doing it on Zoom. Uh, we'll see the best platform for doing it. But basically every single week we're gonna do this. I think we've agreed 6 a.m. Bangkok time works best around the world. Uh, maybe we'll look at doing two sessions a week. We'll see. But anyway, that was awesome. Um, is there anybody else, internet permitting, that, um, that want to share about your journey through this? Do we have, um, have we got Guy on with us? Fire. Jared, anyone want to share? Let me pull up everybody's smiley faces. Look at that, we've got a ton of people in here. We've got a ton of people coming in. Um, Peter, can you, can you share a little bit about what you've learned on your Chinese. No, well, well, well basically from uh, what you've fixed with your pronunciation, things that you've been noticing, and also um, maybe some of the other stuff that we've been doing on Morse. Well, 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 the thing I think, uh, yeah, it's not necessarily Chinese, right now, but, but I'm actually having a rekindle with, with the Thai language right now, because because right now I'm learning on I'm relearning on the Indian compass right now, and I found out that that a lot of the words in Thai, which back then I used I used to have trouble spelling, because we we have a lot of those um uh, on uh, on different on different words in 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 Thai, and then and then now I'm able to repeat those kind of sounds in Sanskrit. It's kind of acts as a memory pack for me to learn Sanskrit. So I'm right now I'm rediscovering Thai again, and there's a lot of Thai Sanskrit uh, vocabulary that is kind of built into me right now. I can set myself up for learning Sanskrit, and 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 and, and Stuart also say that uh, it is also really identical to Russia, r r Russia, the Russian language. So so it's really exciting for me to to jump to jump for like one language to another without 
without without much without much effort. It's like it's like it's it's going to be a lot easier for me. That's awesome, Pete. Yeah. Um, this whole links, and you might think, oh, I don't want to learn Sanskrit. I just I just want to learn the language. Um, but actually in Thai, 60, 70 percent sometimes is Sanskrit. Yeah. Everybody's name, place names, Sanskrit. So when you start linking some of these things, it's huge. Um, one thing I mentioned, so if you go to minecraft.me slash consonant dash compass, and you can open it up here. Can you see behind me on my camera? Yeah. Okay. So, but this is what Pete's talking about here. I'm just opening it up here. Um, it's not just Thai, but this consonant compass, which was basically designed three over 3,000 years ago by the Indians, is a map of the human mouth. So you've got the back of the throat, ga ka ga ka nga, the palate, cha 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 nya. This was originally the top of the mouth, so ta ta da ta da. Um, you hear Indian people talking like this. This is where it's coming from, the purple. Um, then you have dental, ta ta da ta na, and labial, pa 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 ma. So this is the order of the Thai alphabet and the Indic al any Indic alphabet. Burmese, Khmer, it's all based on this map of the mouth. But it's not just a spelling system for these languages. This is actually how language moves right across the world because we're all humans and we all have the same mouth. Um, and so a fundamental part of Minecraft is just basically embedding this into us. And you realize that um, how close, say, Sanskrit is to Russian. If you're a Sla or Slavic languages, and even the spelling rules in Russian are hooked back into this map, which is mind blowing. Um, there are some clips out there. So you go into the Discord um, server, and we've actually got channels for Slavic and thing people talking about, it. and we've actually got some native Slavic language speakers in there. Um, but these things are all linked. Um, somebody said in some of the comments on YouTube, oh, but. You're talking about this, I'm five years off being able to even consider doing this. No, do it from day one. Because what happens if you don't address these things from day one, you are going to set yourself up for some bad habits. I see Layla in there um, that you've been making some comments. And I think Layla, you are, an, uh, sorry, uh, Lalita. You are a Nate, you were born in the US from what I, but Thai blood and you speak it, but you also, have noticed that there are certain sounds on your language because you grew up in the US. It's hearing those things and being able to put it, um, become even more Thai because being away out of Thailand too, you're at a, a disadvantage. And so I think in doing this, you're going to be able to start to hear sounds and put them um, back into the language. Um, who, have we, who else have we got in here? Casper. Would you like to say anything? Yes, I see I, you over there, Casper. Yes, I, I found it uh, extremely inspirational the the last uh, eleven weeks. Um, Is Casper talking? Yes. Can Can you hear me? Okay, so I I found it very I found okay, it very inspirational the last eleven weeks. Um, Particularly, sort of inspired me to learn new scripts, such as uh, the Lana script, uh, Hindi script. Um, also, sort of added to the list of languages I like to learn once uh, once I'm less time constrained, and sort of just generally very inspirational about new methods, new approaches, uh, in order to do that. No, thanks, Casper. And, and too, it's been interesting listening to your development too, because you've got Swiss German as your mother tongue. And so you've got different set of sounds. And I've been noticing some of those sounds change and you've been realizing things as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that um, it's also, you know, having a good effect on your Thai. And who knows what other languages it will open you up to. Mm -hmm. um, how about, I, I see Kevin, have, have you picked up anything um, over the past 
few couple of months that we've been doing this? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I would say that the um, so I, so two things really. So I I guess I should should say that like I've been uh, for a long time kind of in a uh, you know upper upper beginner lower intermediate kind of plateau in Mandarin for for a long time, and it's kind of kind of in that stage where uh beginner there's a lot of beginner material that will bore me to death but then there's native material that is absolutely overwhelming um and then one of the things is like uh some of the ways that we've uh you know like used like ruby tags and things like that to get into reading native content is great because then i can i can access some of the native content you know it's not like you know the dusty old uh you know textbooks like you're, you're talking about um and you know it's interesting um so that that's been great um because without kind of the assistance of of that technology um you know a lot of that those you know like um Chinese newspaper articles like that are kind of unaccessible to me um and then the other thing is that uh, have you made any of your own resources? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want, I can I can share something real quick. Sure. Oh, the host disabled uh, participant screen sharing. Let me, uh, let me let me let me pull my screen off. Pete, can you allow him to sh screen share? Sure. Can you do it? Yeah, it's still disabled. Wait, let me let me just check. I, I'm pulling it up here. Okay, maybe maybe you'll be able to do it now. All participants. Okay, so go. Try that. Yep. So here's. Um, Got it. You know, one of the I can't remember what week it was, but um, you know, we learned how to use uh, these uh, Ruby tags in um, um, to to make these. So this is a all this text is taken from a. a uh, Xinhua uh, news article, and one of the things that I've been been playing around with, I mean, it's it's, it's really pretty basic, uh, but so at first I was always like having like the translation of these things, uh, of these these articles in there, but then I found that I would start to ignore the characters because I can get the meaning right under there. So to uh clean myself off of that i would see I would see this word uh you know feng xiao and i have to make a good guess of what it is and then i can check myself ain't i don't um so anyways, that's awesome and so i see that your tags there you've got Ruby tags on the top and bottom. Have you set the CSS to just uh, make it appear on hover? Yep, it's just a hover on the, um, uh, I, th I think it's called the RTC. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I should probably take like some next steps to make it like, you know, different modes or whatever. But I mean, this it's, it's literally like one line of code that makes this yeah. happen. Um, so, anyways, this which is, you learn in really, Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. Um, so, anyways, I can I can stop sharing this. But um, no, so that was good. Point. And you were, you were going to say another point too that you've done. Okay. Yeah. And then the the other thing is that you know I've got into uh, Cantonese, so I'm at the pretty early stages on that but when you get into that you see like okay the tones are different and 
you know, maybe they start with different consonants. And, um, you know, in my mind, it's, it's just completely different stuff. But after like the lesson in Chinese, like, nope, the tones are not random. They're from Cantonese to, to Mandarin. It makes total sense. And it's, it's very logical. Um, but just nobody ever pointed that out to me. And I've gone through, you know, a decent number of Cantonese lessons, but yeah, nobody explained like the deep, um, you know, things that are that are happening. No, that's that, that, that's Chinese awesome, languages. Jeff. I, I um, saw a clip yesterday, I think I posted it on the Discord server, where one guy, he's uh, Vietnamese, Teacher, he's got a, he's a he's a Western guy with a Vietnamese channel. He sounds a bit Kiwi, maybe, but he put up this clip saying in Vietnamese there's actually eight tones, and it was this enlightening moment after developing fluency in Vietnamese, and it totally changed the way he spoke, and people are actually understanding him more. Blah 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 blah, and he'd only learned that after years of learning Vietnamese. That principle that he talked about is actually what we covered back in a few weeks ago in, in um, the Cantonese and then Vietnamese tones. And it's a fundamental of what you would want to know even before you jumped into learning Vietnamese. Um, because the same principles work for Thai, for Cantonese, for Mandarin, for Vietnamese, even for Burmese. Because um, they're all principles of the throat and where these tones came from. Uh, by the way, you can get those, those Vietnamese tones or the Cantonese tones go to shop.jacademy.com. I've actually got a Margaret t-shirt you can get them. Um, but those, those tones and those tonal rules carry across, even from Cantonese and seeing how they morph into Mandarin. And once you understand them, you can actually shift different dialects of Chinese or even Vietnamese into each other. So that's very cool. Thanks, thanks, Kevin. Uh, maybe stop the screen sharing there. Um, that's awesome. How about fire or anybody who's been going through? Would you like to share, Ian? Hi. Jared. Yep. Can I have a go? Um, Ian. Uh, I, I'm yes. no distance. I'm no distance at all into Minecraft, uh, but I think the most exciting thing for me is the prospect. Of, um, of doing the same sort of thing as Kevin has just shown us, making my own materials. I have uh, set out to, uh, I, I've made sort of the first few steps, um, but the, what I would love to know is if Kevin or um, anybody else has actually got on paper um, uh, the steps that you actually follow to produce the sort of thing that Kevin has just done, because um, I'm really struggling to work that out for myself. I, um, I've, because I've got the clip up there, Ian, but I will put a written version and I'll put it up there on Minecraft for you. So you can actually follow the written steps as well. So you don't just have to look at the video. Thank you. Uh, Lisa wants to share. Yeah. So, so Ian, I will, I will get that for you. And Ian is just to let everybody know your Ian's a old school, um, language guy. You speak Thai, you speak a bunch of languages. So you're no new person to language. So it's an honor to have you in, in the Minecraft group and exciting that you could actually be, you know, developing even some new stuff after many, many years of speaking different languages. Yeah, thanks. Um, um, uh, I'm much more of an amateur than you think. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank, thanks, Ian. Uh, Lolita. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to jump in earlier when you name checked me. I guess I could have. But um, I wanted to mention that um, I, it made me, all, all these things you're talking about with phonetics and um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to catch up on the lessons that I, you know, I joined um, Minecraft only a few weeks ago and then I've been traveling. So, but I was going to say that I had a student, a Thai, because I teach Thai here um, in Los Angeles. And I mean, it's been a few years, but um, one of my students, like his tones were on and everything, but his prosody, I guess you would call it, it was off. And he was saying, 
he, he said, why don't people understand me in Thailand? I said, what are you saying? And he's trying to say pomelo salad. And he would say, yam somo. He was like, uh, pom yak da, yom somo kap. And then they were like, what? And I said, well, it's yom so, it's yam somo, right? And he said, that's what I'm saying, yam somo, yam somo. And so it's those little tiny subtle differences that, you know, it really requires the ear to hear. Um, and and I and sometimes it's just like you know it's it'll help me when I learn more of these linguistic tools to teach people because um, you know you can get all the tones right but it's just if if it, there's just certain elements um, that if you just get them wrong it it, uh, it people it becomes incomprehensible um, a couple of totally. Yeah. And something interesting that I wanted to share is like when I first met my husband, we were both studying Thai um, in a summer program and he had studied Mandarin for like four years before that. So he was saying um, instead of Yipun, he was saying Yipun and um, Puing because the Y, he had learned Mandarin in the way where you don't pronounce, you say E instead of Yi or, you know, like yeah, depending e, on the accent. The e. E. <laughs> yeah, right. The more standard, like the more, I guess, standard pronunciation. So he was doing things. And then when, when he had two third tones um, in Thai, he would change it kind of like ni hao or whatever it is. And so I just thought it was interesting that even your second and third languages can affect each other, um, not just your uh, language of heritage. So I thought that was just interesting. From that, what you, just that happens a over lot, today. actually. People yeah. who have learned a second language, sometimes they go into second language mode when they learn their third. Mm -hmm. And so say they learn um, Italian as their second language and then they learn Thai, they start to put Italian accent over their Thai because mm. that's like foreign language learning mode. Yeah, it's kind of like when I've just basically studied Spanish and then I got and then Italian, they're so close. But then you have the... Um, um, you have the Q U is qua instead of que, it's like que or something like that. Questo instead of gesto. So yeah, it's right. kind of yeah. It's I, I think it's really fun, but it's just like I'm just in, I'll be interested to learn more of this course. And I'm sorry, I'm just today was my awesome. first lesson, but it's so interesting. No, so thank, thank you, you so much, and it's it's awesome having you here. Uh, it's it's all about sound. Language is okay. It's all about people. And so you could learn it cerebrally, but it doesn't really come to life until you start speaking it. And for me, it's all about the relationships as you're speaking with people and to get that maximized relationship, you need the sound. Um, and so that's, that's why I focus a lot on sound and then focus on tech and scripts, because then you can actually get the language out of the environment. Um, so is there anybody else there that would like to share fire jared anything that you've had twing over the past few weeks uh, i can share a little something yeah jared yeah so um i wanted to uh first of all echo uh, what casper said in that uh, the last 10 weeks have been extremely inspirational um you know i i have a bit of a language learning addiction and i don't think that this course has really helped that but uh like for example i wasn't planning on learning vietnamese but now it's on my list but uh <laughs> but uh just being able to see the uh the connections between all these different languages in southeast asia has been really fascinating for me and uh you know chinese doesn't look like quite as intimidating of a language as it was before seeing the connections between uh mandarin and cantonese and uh and then also the uh the lesson on uh, dialects, you know, seeing the connection between like Thai and Lao is really, really fascinating. And I think, uh, you know, it kind of helps me, helps you make sense of these languages. But um, what I wanted to share primarily was the, um, uh, just how, how powerful some of this, uh, some of the phonetics work that we've been doing is. So uh, just to give a little background on why I was looking into this. Um, so I'm, I'm a doctor who does uh, aid work and you know, kind of all over the world. And um, actually this month, at the end of this month, I'm gonna be going to Togo in West Africa to do some aid work. And i um, gonna be there for a little while. And I was looking into the local language there, which is called Ewe. Um, here's the only book on that language I was able to find. 
and there's no audio that goes with it. But what I was able to do and just sort of looking over the phonetics of this language, I was able to find some, uh, some information on the internet with some recordings. And I was able to correspond this language's phonetic system to the consonant compass. And there's one sound in particular, which I thought was kind of interesting. Well, the way that they write it in their phonetic script is um, KP. And it's actually, hold on, I looked up the linguistics term. It is a voiceless by voiceless labial velar plosive. And if you if you go to this textbook, it describes the sound as uh, something that needs some training. And that, they leave it at that. They don't actually describe it. <laughs> but uh, because of the training that we had in Minecraft with the consonant compass, I was able to listen to the recordings I was able to find of this consonant and actually reproduce it. So there's a town near where I'll be called, um, well, it's spelled K-P-A-L-O-M-E. Um, foreigners pronounce it as uh, Palame or Kapalame, but it's actually uh, Palame. So it's a pop. So Can you say that again? Your, your, the back of your tongue is tapping the back of your throat while your lips do a P, essentially, uh, a voice or a, a non-aspirated non mm -hmm. P. And it took some coordination, uh, but I was eventually able to get it. And you know, using using the principles that we've been going over in Minecraft, I was I was able to do that. And as far as I'm able to tell, my pronunciation is close enough to uh, how they do it in airway, but um but i mean that's just to show you like these these principles don't just apply to the languages we're covering they they could they, they, it's like um you know looking under the hood of of language in general and, and figuring out how these things work and so you can apply it to basically anything uh, and i thought that was that was something worth sharing yeah that that's awesome and i i think this is the key a lot of people have said over the past oh language is a gift and you're just gifted at that that's almost a crutch for them not to have to learn. I think I was just lucky to have a grandfather that saw the links and he taught me. And it's once you see the links, the differences between languages don't seem that great. Learning another language is just learning a different shade of red. Um, where for other people, um, I think maybe political boundaries divide languages more. But once you've got these fundamental skills in sound, you can get up and get an eagle-eyed look and then dropping into other languages isn't that much of a jump. Um, that's awesome. I, it, it, I, I'm very moved that it's actually um, had that kind of effect. That's awesome. Um, anybody else? Who have we got? Fires? I can't see other people here. Any? I got a um, it's actually from my friend Lena. She's saying that she's Thai and she speaks and she speaks Chinese. So is it hard for her to learn Vietnamese? Oh. Okay, so if you are Chinese and you speak Thai, Vietnamese piece of cake. <laughs> um, uh, you, we, we actually did that, what, three weeks ago? I think we did our Vietnamese. But you'll see that, depending on different ways you look at it. Now, if you speak southern dialect of Chinese, you will see that maybe be 60 70% of vocabulary in a lot of um, cases you already know from your Chinese. And because Vietnamese has words coming from middle chinese and back then so over like two three thousand years southern dialects are closer so if you speak cantonese hokkien taiwanese um minahua it's going to be much easier to learn the vocab if you speak thai you will have the grammar so if we say um hong se, red color in Thai, it's si dang. And then in Vietnamese, uh, mao da is, which is also si dang, color red. So Vietnamese uses many words from Chinese, but the grammar is closer to 
Thai and Indonesian. Yeah, um, that will be very easy. And the phonetics and the tones are a very fast shift. You will see in the Minecraft resources, I've actually got um, charts that will help you map that. Um, Guy is not in here, is he? Guy not here, and it seems that okay, your camera is back. It was frozen just now. Okay. But by now, okay. Okay, camera camera is back in. Anyway, um, this is this has been awesome. Has now I'd like to put the floor to anybody else. You can ask questions if you'd like help with something. We could do some live stuff here. Um, do some coaching. We can show you how it all gets put to work. Would anybody, anybody got a question or like to have me or anybody else analyze the way you're using language or um, help I, solve something? We've got a question from YouTube. Uh, I think it's uh, Judith Watts. What gave you the idea of, what gave you the idea for Minecraft? Okay. For those who missed it in the beginning, um, actually, I tell you what. Let me see if I can find this. Um, uh, there was a th we had a friend here in Bangkok. Let me just put, I'll just put this here for the moment because it's distracting me. We had a friend here in Bangkok, and um, they their child so half Norwegian, half Thai, and what happened was the mother came and said, "Look, can you?" help our son can you help our son learn music learn language learn computers and, and anything you do just work with him so and so i tried and i tried some stuff originally with like just teaching him some jazz and understanding chords and harmonies and starting to train his ear um and he got it looking at perfect pitch and he was getting it and then we started learning to code. And so he got a computer and learning the terminal. He got it, learning to do web scraping and open source intelligence. And he was getting that. And then Thai, learning to actually get deeper into his Thai, Norwegian. Um, I speak more Danish, uh, but Norwegian, Chinese, Spanish, and then also getting deep into his English. And he was getting them all. And in 18 months, this kid, not only could he play jazz piano, he was doing penetration testing on his buildings internet security um he was doing 3d graphics he was developing games and game interfaces coding them as an 11 year old kid um and languages and so i thought well it's not just me other people can do it i've shown that let's see if we can cookie cut it out and so we had verso international school here which is a brand new international school who has a philosophy that teachers are not people that teach Teachers are just, you should be able to learn from anybody and teachers help coordinate the information. But we as learners need to have fundamental skills to learn. And so I was um, so happy that Verso was willing to do this. And so we started to run this with kids out there in Verso and their parents. So we opened it up and I thought, okay, well, let's put, originally it was going to be 20 weeks. We put it down into 11 weeks. Um, and then uh, because COVID, we had to start to go online. And so I put these modules down and let me sh uh, sh share my screen with you. Uh, let me just, Pete, let me see. I don't know if you can see the screen. So if I come into Minecraft, you can go to, um, if you go to Minecraft and then you click on You can you can see the sharing screen. Yeah. Okay, and and you click click on uh, take me to the course from from what is Minecraft, and it'll take you to this. And so if you have a look at the modules there, basically I thought as I was building this, here are basically are the objectives: install uh, sound and, and writing frameworks that support learning Chinese, Korean, Thai, Lao, Indonesian, Burmese, other languages, European languages as well. Escape your mother tongue sound filters. I was thinking, how do I learn languages? How do we um, teach? And so I came up with these modules in an order that I would have learned. And so if you have a look here, um, escaping our brain. So getting thought fluency. What happens in my head when I'm learning? What happens when I'm doing simultaneous interpreting? So we, I combined exercises from that to um, memory recall. How do I memorize vocab? How do I learn vocab? How do I source vocab? 
How do I use tech? Brain states, uh, looking at Dr. Huberman stuff and different ways of using alpha state, beta state, theta, how, when you're sleeping, how do you promote learning during those things? Um, the shapes of tie. Then we looked at actually individual languages, bringing these principles of sound things in together. In Malay, many people hadn't learned it before, but what if I was learning a language from scratch? What about learning the dialects? And we jump between those. Data driven. So then learning about open source intelligence, gathering data. And basically, we put layer upon layer to a point that you've got not only a good grounding in, say, phonetics or tech or sound um, and, and the brain, but then also in individual languages, which brings us to today. I think last week was Vietnamese, but this was the program. But then we thought, well, hell, if why limit it to 11 weeks? And so while we're in week 11, we're recording these to go up for each week. We're just going to do this every week and keep on um, going on ad nauseum every single week. We're going to meet. And so Minecraft students, we will have 90 minute sessions. I'll choose a topic, but then hand it back. We'll be doing coaching and learning on any of these topics. We did Morse code, by the way. Uh, that was a fun session. I see that people have been learning Morse code because this helps turn your brain into alpha state, push it into alpha state. And then you can actually train yourself to start thinking without actually concentrating and hearing things without having to convert them into individual word blocks. You're hearing sounds as meanings. So that was cool. We learned Morse code, ABCD, sign language, but all of these things putting together just to push the brain to its limits. Okay, other questions? Other, do we have any other? No? Okay, so to other people there also, if this has been something that you like, come in and join in the discussion in our Discord group. I'll just show you. I'm, uh, let, me, let me pull Discord up. Come on, computer. My computer's having a heart attack here. Where is my Discord here? So if you have a look at Discord, we have these general topics, Morse code, Minecraft general, mind and brain. And so we talk about all of this stuff, magic and mentalism, something I've always loved. Music, books, we have a book club. So, so and we're gonna start doing, being more serious about that. Then we have Thai, Chinese, Korean, Khmer, Vietnamese, Indonesian, Sanskrit, sign language, Slavic languages, and we're gonna be adding to those. We have native speakers, learners, people at all different levels, but we don't want to limit this to any individual language. It's basically, and actually this has been something that has helped learning as well. Have you ever learned something and then you just hit a plateau or you hit a block and your learning stops? One thing I've noticed with these channels in the Discord server is because they're so diverse. So you might go from something like Morse code to learning Thai to, um, sign language to speaking about some book that you've read. When your brain's getting tired, switch topics. And as you switch topics or you go into coding or something like that, your brain's getting enough of a breather that when you finally come back, it's refreshed and maybe you've learned something else that's actually going to support what you were learning or where you were getting stuck. So actually having this range of topics I've found for me has actually pushed me on to learn even more. And there are people in the group that are much more knowledgeable about me about these topics too. And so I've been learning from them just as much. Everybody's learning from each other. So come into our Discord group. Pete, you might be able to share the link again, or I think the link's shared in there. Um, and keep the conversation. And of course, if you really uh, are into it, come and join Minecraft. Um, click in there, minecraft.me and join, and you'll be able to be part of this every week. Um, no matter what language it is that you're learning, uh, we'll be able to go help you through this and put the community to push you into that. And you're in it for a year. And after that, I, I need, I want to keep this going forever. I need to actually you know, be able to survive on this as well. So we've put, um, if you're in it, you're in it for a year. Every year, maybe there's a little continuation fee that you will get access to. But basically, I just want this to be a place where everybody's inspired to learn. And, you know, look at some of these clips I've been putting out. Um, you'll see me put more and more stuff out on YouTube. 
there's a ton of content there and I'm continuing to put content in every week into the Minecraft content as well. Um, the way it works is you do your Minecraft module content, but then I've got all of these support core modules on all of the topics that you can do deep dives in as well, whether it's the coding side, the tech side, or language specific information. Ian, I'll also be doing textual versions and articles so you can actually go in and um, see the articles and follow along if you don't want to have to look at the videos as well. So yeah, any other questions? The topic for next Sunday, good question. You know what? I'm going to make a new Minecraft channel. I could even do it here as we speak. And I'm going to open the floor to you guys. What topic would you like to do next week? And um, let me do this. New topics for videos and lessons. I'm going to make that this brand new Minecraft channel, new topics, and keep that in general. And basically, everybody, you can vote in topics and we will be covering them. I'll be going over deep dives into other topics that we've already covered. All that content will be going up. But if there's something that you want to talk about, and it doesn't just have to be language, it might be on music, or um, a lot of people have been talking about the relationship between that harmony and things like this and what we're doing with language or other things. So it could be on that as well. But next week, I haven't chosen a topic yet. I've just put the channel up there. So everybody will be welcome to jump in and, and um, contribute to this channel as well. I'll make it accessible to everybody. Um, so yeah, I haven't made a decision yet. I'll make a decision and you'll be able to see that in Minecraft in, on the Discord server. Uh, anybody else? Okay. I, I yeah. I have trouble like uh, trying to remember scripts. Yeah. I really like the the five by five, and I can remember it in terms of my where in my mouth these things are. But I have trouble remembering this the Thai script to the the, the frame or even the Devanagari. Right. So actually, the, the, the letter shapes mm -hmm. and locking them into which place is which. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you were, say, to learn like Cyrillic or something else, then you would set the same skill set to, to, to match a shape to the sound. Okay. Well, so, 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 uh, Renan here. So, Renan's a native of Singapore. You speak Chinese, you speak Malay, mm -hmm. uh, English, of course, and learning Thai. And he was saying that um, has an issue with matching the actual shapes and remembering those and slotting them into here uh, to the, the compass, um, the map of the mouth. I've got a lot of stuff on that in Cracking Thai Fundamentals, which I'll, I'll open up to you as well. But there are some, I, I think maybe you haven't got up to that lesson yet too, where we actually talk about hacks with what shapes are matching. There are some common tells as you go through these scripts to show which one goes with which. So there are some tricks you can use to start to predict which shape might be what sound across index script. Uh, the other part of your question was, is there any relationship, like that's why I mentioned uh, the Cyrillic script in Russian, they actually map into these. If you know the basic sound, um, you can map the Cyrillic sounds into these. So you can definitely do that. And the other cool thing is though, because in say in Russian, we have these hard sounds and soft sounds. Um, so you use the, we call Myaki um, Snak and the Svodi um, Snak, I think that's what they call for the hard and soft um, sounds. They map straight into the palatal row and the guttural rows. And they have rules for these, but you don't have to remember the rules or exactly which letters if you just understand the sound. The actual spelling rules in Russian can be felt once you've got this embedded in you, which I've realized, which is actually really cool. Um, because again, spelling rules are actually based on sounds in real life. Um, I haven't got as deep into other languages like Polish and things that we have for, uh, and we have native speakers in the group as well of these other languages. I'd love to learn. I've been learning some inter-Slavic, um, getting into that, but yeah. These apply equally to Russian. They apply equally to Chinese languages. They even apply to 
Scandinavian languages, Kyrka, Shirka, again, they're dropping, um, they're just moving across the grid in this um, uh, matrix of sound. Anyone else before we wrap up? It's funny that you should say learning the uh, phrase as a jingle. My family, there was actually a podcast, I'll put a link to it. Uh, my uncle, uh, Jeff Ailing and Aunt Jenny, just Google Jeff and Jenny Ailing podcast, A-Y-L-I-N-G. Um, they are the jingle kings and que king and queen of Australia. Um, if you grew up in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s in Australia, you have good on your mum, tip top's the one, um, or um, Shelley's is ours too. Uh, or TDK does amazing things, Take Me Away P&O, or Barocca, BBB Barocca, all these commercials that you grew up. Um, his father was the grandfather that taught me the languages. And he actually has made a living of using sound and embedding sound subconsciously into people's memory to help sell stuff. Uh, all of these, they've done over 10,000 jingles in Australia over the years. And it's the same thing. They've used sound to be able to get into the subconscious and be there as recall. And you'll notice a lot of the principles that they speak about in this podcast are actually what we use to learn language and have recall over language. For example, people who've gone through Minecraft, just answer. One, run. Two, come on, Pete. Two, three. Okay. And if there, I know if Harry was there and I say three, what was the animal? What is it, the cowardly lion, tiger, which is cool. Um, and so we're using a lot of these recall techniques um, that we do in Minecraft to start to put frameworks up so you can actually put things from short-term memory into long-term memory. In saying that, a lot of these mega memory techniques, I don't believe are effective techniques for long-term language um, learning. They're good for party tricks. Um, but there are much more effective techniques for getting vocab into you. Um, and it's important to get vocab into you, not just as individual words, but actually in context, um, which I hope we'll be doing a lot more of too in future um, sessions that we do. Anyone else before we wrap up? Ah, oh, yes, we cover space repetition. Um, I was actually um, sent a message through to Mike at Glossica. Um, actually, the Vietnamese lesson, we cover space repetition and I teach you how to make a space repetition tool of your own. So you can actually build space repetition files of your own on your computers based on any texts. Um, but Glossica, I guess, would be the gold standard in a lot of in space repetition products that are out there. Mike's done amazing things. Now, Mike has to run a business as well. I love Mike's original stuff and we actually look at some of the original stuff, but then Mike has so many different languages and he's like he's his blood is in glossica you know he's he's put his own blood heart soul tears into glossica and so look at that he's got some amazing stuff out there um that's g-o-l g-l-o-s-s-i-k-a glossica.com um and look at his stuff but space repetition is one tool but Mike built Glossica, I know, just based on the way, the way that he learns languages, uh, the way that we all learn languages. And so highly recommended and we do cover space repetition in Minecraft. And we'll do more. Yeah, yeah. Mike also used to have something called triangulation and learning different languages. Yeah. Together. Okay, so triangulation, what Mike would do, you could actually order on demand. So um, say files in Italian, Spanish, and French or English and be able to do get triangulated files between uh, space repetition between three languages, four languages at once. I personally do that. And especially with related languages. So if you're learning Spanish, Italian, sometimes I or, or, or related languages like this or say Indonesian and Tagalog, I will learn the differences or Cantonese and Mandarin the differences between these two languages serve as memory pegs for me. Um, so triangulation is something that works for me. Other people might say that, no, just focus on one language at a time. Um, I believe in choice. And so with Minecraft, at least you've got the skills that you can build the tools yourself. You don't have to worry about products that are out there and you can learn. I love triangulation. 
Yeah. Um, Luis, I see. I use something that they changed the name of, but they still, uh, before you know it, transparent language, bought it for one language, but have used it to make flashcards. Uh, yeah, and we talk about Anki as well. Maybe I'll do a thing on building Anki decks and different techniques. Um, I We cover HTML and S, uh, CSS like you saw with Kevin's stuff, and you can actually apply those directly to your Anki decks and then putting these, these files also in there. Um, so that's interesting. I'll have a look into that, uh, Lewis, uh, those decks. And Lewis is one of the most uh new members to the minecraft fold as of last night so welcome to the gang um yeah and and okay let's let's talk about speaking pigeon and and this actually ties into um language learning with kids and multiple language learning let me just t speak on because i have a little toddler at home she's growing up our base language at home is thai and english and but i'm starting to getting i have a song um Mm, good morning. So, and that's a G, by the way. Slamat pagi, sawat di, buenos dias, buongiorno. And let's all count to ten. Let's all count to sepuluh. Let's all count to shi. And I'm setting these frameworks where she's even getting buenos dias, 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 not buenos dias. Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. I'm trying to set sound structures in her mind from a kid. So even if she's not getting fluent language, these sounds are going to be familiar with her. Parents are the people who start to limit the abilities of their kids because they say, learn, learn one language at a time. Or my kid's getting confused. My kid's speaking late. Um, if you provide all of these things for the kids, though, kids are like a sponge and they're going to learn out. Um, yeah, they might start speaking a little later, but they're understanding everything. And they're learning multiple languages at once. I learn multiple languages at once. I triangulate languages and I don't see anything detrimental at it. Now, if your target though is just to focus on one language and build up super fluency, super in whatever time period, yeah, maybe you want to focus on that one language. But for me, I can't remember a time in my life where I've only been learning one language. I'm always learning more than one language at a time. And for me, it gives my brain a rest to switch languages up. So some people will agree, some people will disagree. Um, but I believe in um, simultaneous language acquisition across languages. And especially if language is related, they can, that can help you. And I will be using multiple languages with my daughter as she grows up. Yeah, I'm um, reading growing up uh, with Ty. I feel like I had a lot of sounds. Yeah, and I'll just say I have two kids um, that are grown up now. They live in Australia. They grew up with uh, as Thai, Thai Thais until the age of about six. And then they moved to Australia. They didn't speak a word of English, but they had a foundation in English. When they hit Australia within three months, they sounded like little Aussie kids from not having a word in, a word in English to the point now that they're native speakers in both Thai and English. Uh, they're 16, 17 years old now. Um, but I believe that setting that foundation in kids with sound from a very early age is going to pay big dividends in the future. Even if they're not learning the language um, fluently, then they're getting the sound framework. Yeah. Any other questions uh, in YouTube too? I haven't been following. Yeah, I, I've been tracking this. Okay. okay. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll be sharing this. Maybe I should put another cha channel up there, the child language acquisition. Um, that might be an interesting topic for, um, for parents as well in the Discord server. Actually, I'll do that one today. Um, I'm sure people will be into that. What about Cantonese? Yeah, what about Cantonese? What's the question? Yeah. That's what he said. What about Cantonese? <laughs> Cantonese, you will learn it in Minecraft. You will get a grounding in that. Um, Cantonese, I love Cantonese. It's so, it's much closer to this middle Chinese and then uh, like older Chinese, the, the Zhongguo Hanyu, Shanggu Hanyu, Zhongguo Hanyu. And so once you get a grounding in Cantonese or one of these older Chinese dialects that still retains all of the old tone categories, it's much, much easier to jump into Thai, to Vietnamese and other Chinese dialects. We cover that in Minecraft. I forget which week it was. Yeah, and people ask me, how's the Russian going? I love Russian. 
Um, I've Russian's gone on pause for a while, but I really need to get back into it. And you know what? I would love people like Fire Fire for other native speakers of Russian in the group to do an analysis and coach me phonetically on my Russian. And maybe that'd be a good thing, watching my progress, because I I know now the theories behind Russian and the sounds and everything, but I've never had a chance to actually put it into action. So maybe that would be a good series, seeing me develop my Russian pronunciation and prosody. And you can help me with that um, using my techniques back with me, coaching me in Russian. So let's do it. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Uh, Ian has a question. Yeah, Ian. Uh, I thought it would be very interesting if you do some follow up with uh, with uh, I can't remember his name. The, the young chap, Benny, not Benny, the chap you met in the street, um, the the Irishman, Paddy. Um, uh, if you are you going to do some work with him because it will be very interesting to get his perception of how Minecraft ideas help him. Okay, so with Paddy, thanks, Ian. Um, if you haven't watched, look, I really recommend you go back and look at this clip I put out the other day with Paddy. He's, for, he's got a clip, um, Thai Talk with Paddy. He, um, I, was, I was very careful to put that up and I wanted to get his permission before doing it and he was such a good sport and let me do that. We've been talking on WhatsApp since then and it turns out that Paddy's mum is a trained speech therapist and she was it, she said that she was totally into the um analysis that we did and so patty uh and i are talking about what we can do in the future to really help out one thing that i've suggested to patty um i don't want to put him on the spot it's not putting him on the spot but i would love because patty's got so much enthusiasm too and he's there in australia where we've got all these nationalities i would love to work with patty using these principles not only with his tie but say Indonesian. And so seeing how we could take somebody with Paddy with a grounding in Thai, but then get him up to speed in Indonesian with native like Jakarta prosody. Jadi kalau dia lagi di jalan di Australia, dia bisa ngomong bahasa Indonesia kayak orang Jakarta, he can actually start to get these Indonesian rhythms from scratch. Um, whether Paddy wants to do it, if anyone else is up to do it, let me know and maybe we can do that as a project. But I think that'd be cool. But either way, I really want to do something with Paddy. Uh, I've just received a message from Matt versus Japan. Um, if you're a follower of that and you're learning Japanese. And so I, I hopefully be able to do something with him. And yesterday I was talking to Luca uh, Lampariello from Italy. And so Luca is a old school polyglot from way back when, the 2007, when I first had my channel out too. And hopefully we'll be able to do something with Luca in the future as well. But it's exciting. You'll notice many more uh, clips coming out for, on YouTube from from me, but I really want to get this out and get people buzzed. Language, not just one language, but just you know, language in general, and and different principles that can help in other areas of your life as well. Um, yeah. Anything else? Okay, everybody. With that. Minecraft.me, come into the Discord server. You can see the link in there in the comments, I think. Um, thank you so much for your support, for everybody that's been part of Minecraft that doesn't finish today. Um, and I will take all of the feedback and continue to build it. I appreciate it. And I hope that you will still come in to all of the sessions that we run on weekends. As people come into Minecraft and add, the community is going to grow. And I believe this is going to be something awesome as we grow it out. Who knows where we'll be in a year's time. Um, thank you, Ian. Thank you, uh, Jared. Thank you, um, just Casper, Rob. Rob, you're amazing. You're awesome. I couldn't have actually done this without that. You've made such a difference. Jenjen, and Pete, uh, Guy, you're awesome. Everybody, um, as you're coming in, uh, Lolita, thank you. As you're coming in, you'll be part of the family. But even if you're not part of that group yet, you can still talk in the Minecraft channels and you get access to full access channel. I think it's $7 a month or $70 a year and you'll get access to all of the channels, except for the class channel, but all of the other channels you can actually, you can read them without having the subscription, but to actually join in the conversations on these other channels, subscribe, come on, seven bucks a month. And that will help me um, keep this running. Uh, my, I, my work has changed a lot since COVID. So we've moved from, um, from aerospace industry shut down, the hotel industry is shut down here at least. 
And so this is one thing that's been able to open a new avenue um, for me to continue what I love doing and hopefully help a lot of people at the same time. Thank you, everybody. Uh, come and join Minecraft and I'll see you next week. And I'll see you on the other side in Discord.